So we started the day visiting Granville Island and there were a ton of shops to explore here. Because we were visiting during the summer, we were craving for some ice cream and stopped by the shop called The Milkman. We ordered Pauline ice cream and this was my first time actually hearing about this flavour and it was so good. We also enjoyed some live music and good views. We headed to Tap and Barrel for lunch and ordered fish and chips along with clam chowder with garlic bread. The views here were amazing. Here's some food ASMR. But in all honesty, I was a little disappointed with the food compared to the other fish and chips we had later on. The batter was over fried and the fish just wasn't flaky enough. After lunch, we took a bus to Stanley Park. We took a long stroll around the park and saw some beautiful landmarks. A word of advice, visit when the weather is cooler because walking 3 hours in Vancouver's heat was not fun. You can see that it was actually low tide because we visited in the early afternoon and during summer. We ended the day visiting the Metropolis, which is the largest mall in Burnaby, and had boiling pot for dinner. I ordered the beef hot pot, which came with a wide variety of ingredients such as beef slices, mushrooms, fish cake, crab stick, tofu, cabbage, tomato, and corn. The next day, we started out at Simon Fraser University, and the campus looked surreal. We took a hike up Burnaby Mountain to enjoy the views. There was also a rose garden at the top. We headed to Cockney King's Fish and Chips for lunch, where they offered an all-you-can-eat fish and chips buffet for only $16.95. You could tell that the fish and fries were freshly fried, with the batter being so crispy. The fish was also much flakier compared to the one at Granville. We also ordered a side of mushy peas and coleslaw, which offered a nice balance to the overall dish. This place was such a steal, and I highly recommend visiting it. We visited Lynn Canyon, more commonly known as Capilano's Free Alternative, and I must say, this place did not disappoint. Of course, we had to visit the locally established Tim Hortons. Here's a list of items we ordered during our trip. My friend raved about the French vanilla, so my expectations were pretty high, but it was so good. I also recommend the herb and garlic cream cheese bagel because the spread was chef's kiss. The next day, we took a ferry to Nanaimo, which was an hour and a half for 38 bucks both ways. The seats were wide and spacious, and it was a very enjoyable ride. We also tried poutine on the ferry, but let's just say I should have tried it at a proper local eatery. We rented a car and drove to our accommodation. We settled down and drove to the real Canadian superstore to grab some groceries to cook with. I honestly fell in love with the superstore, so much so that we spent 90 bucks on groceries for a 3 night stay. For dinner, we opened a can of mushroom soup and whipped up this mushroom and meat stir fry to put over some pasta. This was the definition of Italian-Asian fusion because some people just can't get enough of their sauceless pastas. I woke up earlier the following day to prepare some bagels for the road. I added some mozzarella cheese, salami and jalapeno sour cream. We started our day early because it was a two and a half hour drive to the national park and we got to enjoy some scenic routes on our way there. We parked by a boat launch area at Upper Campbell Lake for a short break to have our breakfast. It was such an experience to pack some food and drive out to a national park just to soak in the nature. This moment was a core memory we unlocked. 
We also took a little walk to admire the picturesque views that we were blessed with. We tried skipping some stones, but you can clearly see us feeling. We continue our journey further into the park and stumble upon Lady Falls. This was a quick 15 minute hike to see the waterfall and it was such a beauty. One of the greatest lessons I got from this road trip is the need to plan your route, especially when visiting national parks with endless beauty to explore. We stopped by one more site before heading back. For dinner, we made actual pasta with a tomato base, mushrooms and lots of cheese because at this point, we knew we weren't able to finish our groceries by the end of the third night. We also made a cabbage stir-fry because we weren't having enough greens. We ended the night with some Tim Hortons small ice cream for only 4 bucks. At this point, you know I have a personal bias for Tim Hortons, so I loved every bite of it. On day 5, we had bagels, yes bagels, again for breakfast. Like I said, we had a lot of food to get through the next day. We also had a can of Campbell celery soup with spring onions that really elevated the dish. We began our journey to Quinzo Trestle, where we got to enjoy a beautiful man-made bridge. We then headed to Redfish Bluefish to grab lunch. We ordered a two-piece Pacific cod and the fish was the flakiest out of all the places we visited. We took a stroll around Victoria and got a pastry from Beaver Tails, which was a good post-meal snack but really sweet. We regretted not having spent more time in Victoria as there seemed to be so much more to explore. The following day we returned our car, but not before getting a Nanaimo bar. The combination of the thick custard with coconut graham crust topped with chocolate ganache worked so well together. We headed to Richmond for a little shopping and got a Chinese hot pot buffet for our last meal in Vancouver. There was a variety of Chinese dumplings which were all pretty good. Other items include seafood, vegetables, cooked food and various meat slices. Canada was such a beauty and I stand by that statement since the day I landed. The people here were friendly and the views, incredible.